Hi there, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about LangGraph. LangGraph is a powerful framework that makes it easier to design LLM powered workflows using a graph based approach. Instead of juggling scattered logic, you can connect nodes, tools, and memories into clear, controllable flow. In this tutorial, we will explore LangGraph step by step, learning how to build, organize, and scale AI applications with real world examples. That said, if these are the type of the videos you'd like to watch, then hit that subscribe button with the bell icon to get notified whenever we host. Also, just that you know, if you want to upskill yourself, master generative AI and artificial intelligence skills, and land your dream job or grow in your career, then you must explore Simply Learn's cohort of various generative AI courses and certification. Simply Learn offers various certification programs in collaboration with some of the world's leading universities like Purdue, IIT Guwahati, and many more. Through this course, you will gain knowledge and expertise in skills like advanced Python, machine learning, generative AI, and dozens of others. That's not all. You'll also get the opportunity to work on multiple projects and learn from industry experts working in top-tier data and product companies, and also academicians from top universities. After completing these courses, thousands of learners have transitioned into an AI and machine learning role as a fresher or moved on to a higher paying job and profile. If you are passionate about making your career in this field, then make sure to check out the link in the pinned comment and description box to find a generative AI program that fits your expertise and areas of interest. Now without further delay, let's get started. In this video, we'll cover the basics of LangGraph, starting with a bit of theory, followed by a practical example to help you quickly get hands-on. So let's get started. So let's start with what is LangGraph. LangGraph is an AI agent framework built by the team behind LangChain. It's designed to let you build complex workflows that involve one or more language models and lets the LLM decide what happens next in the flow. It's highly flexible, supports both Python and JavaScript, and has been growing in the popularity since its release in October 2023. Especially, it's an alternative to other agent frameworks like Crew AI or Microsoft Autogen. Now that we have a basic understanding on what LangGraph is, let's focus on an example to understand the working principles involved like decision made referring to the knowledge basis and requirement of human intervention. So how does it work in practice? Let's take an example. Imagine a virtual assistant for a healthcare clinic. A patient sends a message asking to book appointment. The agent might check the patient's medical history, suggest available time slots based on their doctor's sketching. The agent can even pre-fill a form to request a prescription renewal. But let's say the patient is requesting medication that requires doctor's approval. In this case, we need a human doctor or a nurse to review the request before moving forward. LangGraph makes it easy with human in the loop execution, where the workflow can pause, wait for human input, and then continue automatically once it's approved. But let's say it's a critical medication. We probably want a real human doctor to approve it before it's directed to the patient. So guys, LangGraph actually makes this easy using human in the loop execution so the flow can pause, wait for human input and then continue. Now that we have a clear understanding of the working principles and also it's not just the medical support but also there are wide range of applications. Let's go through them. Now let us explore where LangGraph can be useful. The first one is copywriting, generating content by pulling data from multiple sources. LangGraph can combine research from web articles, product specs and previous campaigns to create high quality blog posts, ads or email content automatically. Then you can find its use case in custom analytics like creating dashboard, summaries or extracting insights from a database. You can build agents that query databases, clean process data, then generate natural language summaries or visual reports without manual intervention. Finally, you have customer assistance where you can answer queries via email, WhatsApp, SMS, or even voice. LangGraph can handle multi-channel conversation, maintain context across threads, and escalate issues to a human if needed, all within a seamless flow. You can get personalized recommendations, tailored suggestions based on past user interactions also. 
By analyzing users' behavior, purchase history, or preferences, Langraph agents can offer dynamic, relevant suggestions in the real time, improving user engagement. You can also use in research and trend monitoring, like staying up to date with new articles or developments. You can also find its use case in recommendations, like personalized recommendations, which are tailored suggestions based on the past user's interaction. By analyzing user behavior, purchase history, or preferences, Langraph agents can offer dynamic, relevant suggestions in real time, improving users' engagement. Then you can find in research and trend monitoring. You can stay up to date with the new articles or developments. Agents can continuously monitor specific topics or keyword, summarize key insights, and deliver timely updates to user or internal teams. And finally, in personalized marketing like crafting messages that match each customer's preferences. Langgraph can generate individualized marketing emails, SMS or ad copy that reflects each customer's interest, tone and behavior, boosting response rates. Now you might be wondering, these automations can be done with the help of any other alternatives available in the market? In fact, few of them have already set benchmarks in different domains. So now you'd be wondering, what makes Langgraph so special? So let us discuss some of the features of Langgraph. The first one is built-in streaming. Langgraph supports token or message level streaming right off the box, allowing faster and more responsive interactions in real time. Moving the second one, we have async execution. So async execution enables multiple steps to run in parallel, making workflows more efficient and reducing wait times. That brings us to the third feature. The third feature here is persistence. So if I talk about persistence, Langgraph lets you store and reload certain graph state using database. So agents can maintain context even across different sessions of failure. Fourth one is fault tolerance. Imagine one of your workflow tools is inactive or not operational, and your entire flow is disrupted and cannot be fixed unless you restart the flow. But things are different in Langra. It helps you by automatically handling call failures. Fifth one, we have human in the loop. So the next feature, if I'm going to talk about Langraph supports pausing the workflow, then seamlessly resuming once the human has responded. And we have already understood that in very first example, where an AI medical assistant waits for human in loop approach before recommending medication to a patient. Now this brings us to the last feature of the Langgraph, that is state management. Langgraph simplifies decision making by keeping track of all the inputs, outputs and context variables throughout the entire flow. With the features now we have discussed, let's shift to architecture of Langgraph or simply put the core building blocks of Langgraph. So what are the core building blocks of Langgraph? Every Langgraph has the following main component. Let's begin with the first one. First one that we have is nodes. Nodes are like building blocks of your graph, where each code performs a specific function or piece of logic, such as calling an API, processing data, or generating text. Next one that we have all over here is edges. Edges act as connectors that determine the order of execution, ensuring data and control move smoothly from one node to the next. Proceeding further, we have a slightly smarter type of edge that's called conditional edge. The name speaks for itself. Conditional Edge add intelligence by branching the workflow, choosing the next step dynamically based on conditions or the current state of information. Lastly, we have a state. State works as shared memory space that tracks of all the inputs, outputs, and variables, ensuring different individual nodes that can access and update information accordingly and consistently. Next, let us dive into powerful architectures. So these are the powerful architectures that are supported. First, we will go through the router architecture. Router act like traffic controllers applying conditional logic to decide which prompt, tool, or branch of the workflow should be executed next. Proceeding next one, we have React style agent architecture. React style agents follow a reasoning action observation loop where LLM itself chooses the right tool, executes it, and uses the tool's output to refine its next step. Last but not the least, we have reflection patterns. Reflection patterns introduce a review mechanism where one LLM generates content and another LLM evaluates critiques and improves it for higher accuracy. 
With that discussed, let's dive into a practical example for better learning experience. This project is actually designed to read through text and figure out if it's talking about the weather. Not only that, it can pull something like location, temperature, conditions, and even the time. The best part, it works offline with simple rules. And it gets smarter if you connect it to an open API key. You can run it directly from the command line and output the result as JSON object and use the clean web interface to test it on your browser. This tool works in two ways. Offline using built-in rules and heuristics or online with open API key, where LLM makes the decision and extractions more accurate. So guys, you can run it through a simple command line tool or analyze text or files. You can even output result at structured JSON objects. For those who prefer the visual, here is the UI interface you can see, and where you just type the text and see the results. The setup is straightforward with Python, and the project is organized into graphs, heuristics, and simple inputs. Since including an LLM can cost you, so we went rather a simple approach which we can bypass the API keys and even without API key, the project still works just smarter with the one. The basic requirement for this project is ID and a programming language. The ID we'll be using is called cursor.ai, as you can see. You can download and run this repository on any ID of your choice, like VS Code or Jupyter Notebook. So let's get started with the first file. Our first file here, as you can see, is requirement.txt. This will help us learn about the requirements needed to get started with the project. To run this project, we need a few Python libraries. These include LangGraph, LangChain for building workflow, LangChain OpenAI for LLM support, and Pydantic for handling data models. We'll also use .env to manage environment variables. Finally, the web interface runs on FastAPI, Yuvcon, and also Jinja2. Now, let us proceed to the static files. Here we will understand HTML, CSS styles we need to execute this project on. Basically, we will executing this on localhost. To keep it short, this project includes a simple styling setup to make the web interface clean and easy to use. The background is set to dark theme with accent colors for highlight and also muted tones for readability. Forms, buttons, and cards are designed with rounded corners and spacing, giving it a modern and minimal look. Error messages are styled separately, so they stand out clearly. Now let us discuss the command line interface file. This project comes along with a command line interface built using typer and ridge. With the analyze command, you can analyze a text or a file which contains weather report and see details like location, temperature, conditions, and time. You can print the result in minimal and a nice table. So as you can see, as a raw JSON needed, there is also a current command that fetches the live weather data for any given city using OpenMeetU. This makes it easy to test the workflow directly from your terminal and without needing the web UI. Now let us discuss the app.py file. This is the fast AI web app for the project. It serves a simple home page where you can enter a location and shows a weather report using clean template. Behind the scene guys, it uses fetch current weather function to get the live weather data and display its result on the page. Static files and templates are neatly organized, making the web interface lightly and easy to use. Think of this app file as a front desk where users type their query and the backend fetches the actual weather report. Now, let us discuss lives.py. This file handles the live weather data. First, it uses the OpenMeteo Geocoding API to turn a city name into latitude and longitude. Then, it fetches the current weather for those coordinates, like temperature, wind, and conditions. If the city isn't found, it returns a simple error message. This is a part of the project that connects the workflow to a real-world weather data. 
This is the most important part of our file. So let us elaborate based on the code blocks. First, there you can see we have the imports HTTPX for making API calls. Next, you can see here we have defined async def geocode city. So this is a helper function which we call it as geocode city. It takes in a city name calls open meteor geocoding API and then it returns latitude and longitude for that city. Then we have all over here main function fetch current weather. It first calls geocoding function to get the city's coordinate. If the city isn't found, then it returns the error. And if the city exists, it makes another API call. This API call goes to open meteor forecast API and this time it's asking for the current weather. Finally, it builds up a dictionary with the city name, coordinates and the current weather data and it sends it back. So you can see all over here. So guys, the flow is simple. It takes the city, finds coordinates, fetch the live weather and returns a structured data. Now, all you have to do is guys, just run this project. You can type a prompt or the agent window of the cursor AI to execute this project on the local host. So let's get to the execution phase. This might take a little bit of time. Just a moment while it shoots the local host address. There you go. You have the local host address. We can either click as the link is or we can copy and paste the same URL on the browser. I will use Google Chrome. Now we have a page to enter a location. And there you go. You have the weather report for the given location. And with that, we have reached the end of this session on LangGraph tutorial for beginners. Should you need any assistant or any other resources used in the sessions like PPT and source code, then please let us know in the comment section below. And our team of experts will be happy to help you as soon as possible. Until then, next time, thank you and keep learning. And if you like these kind of videos, then do not forget to hit the notification bell icon so that you don't miss out any update from us.